2020. The last presidential election saw the highest voter turnout in U.S. history, and it might have awoken a sleeping electoral giant. According to the Poor People's Campaign, low-income Americans made up some 35% of 2020 voters. So imagine how they could change the game this November. The Poor People's Campaign now working to get out the vote among low-income Americans in 2022, aiming to reach out to 5 million voters across 15 key states before Election Day. The man leading that mission is with us now, Reverend William Barber II, co-chair of the Poor People's Campaign. He's also president of Repairs of the Breach. Reverend, thank you for joining us. So tell us why this outreach will be critical ahead of the 2022 midterms, and also why you chose the 15 states uh, to focus on. Well, thank you so much, uh, Brother Secretary. You know, the 15 states we're looking at, in all of those states, poor and low wealth voters make up over 40% of the electorate. In fact, poor and low wealth voters now make up 33% of the electorate overall and over 45% in battleground states. We had some 58 million to vote, but there are 85 million poor and low wealth voters who are eligible. So that any kind of political strategy that doesn't talk about how we're going to move poor and low wealth voters to the poll uh, is kind of inept. It's not only economically insane, it's politically inept. Now, we know that this division we're seeing now with Trump and all, it's not Trump. He didn't start it. He's continuing. It started with the Southern strategy in the South with a deliberate attempt to, to, to set, separate and divide poor and low-wealth uh, black people and white people and Latinos for the purposes of controlling who got elected so that they could control policy. We, we have to know that. I think they called it back then positive polarization is what the Nixon people de described, a deliberate division. And what we need to say today is if we ever needed to vote for democracy and justice, we need to vote now, and we need to focus on policy. policy. We must challenge not only the violent insurrection, but violent policies, like denying living wages, which keeps 50-some million people working for less than the living wage, uh, refusing to address poverty, where 700 people die every day from poverty, 140 million people in this country who are poor and are low wealth, denying universal health care. 330,000 people died from the lack of health care during COVID denying voting rights and fixing the voter rights. Those are violent policies that whoever wants to win and get the majority needs to be speaking to, and, and that will move poor and low wealth voters to the polls because it will speak to the realities of their everyday life. And speaking of moving uh, low income voters to the polls, talk to us about the misconception that low income Americans don't vote. How does that impact uh, outreach from politicians and how does it impact policy decisions? Well, you know, we did this study called Waking the Sleeping Giant. We found three reasons that poor and low-wealth voters don't vote. The number one reason was nobody talks to us. Politicians don't come where we are. They don't speak to us. They talk about the middle class and the wealthy, but they don't talk about poverty. We need to recover that language to talk about poverty. Secondly, we know that Biden and Harris, for instance, got 53 percent of low-income voters in the last election. Uh, we know in every state where the margin of victory was in within 3 percent, poor and low wealth voters made up over 45 percent of the electorate. We know, for instance, in states uh, like North Carolina and Florida and Georgia and Michigan, uh, poor and low wealth voters who did not vote, if they just voted between 1 and 19 percent more than voted in 2020, they could determine who sits in the presidency, who sits in the governorships, who sits in the Senate. And so this is serious business. We cannot write off 140 million people. We cannot write off 45 percent of the electorate. But in order to not write them off, we must we must speak them in. You know, Democrats have to say, listen, look at what we have been able to do despite 49, uh, 49 Republican senators who blocked us and two renegade Democrats. Imagine what we could do uh, if we had a clear majority. And if we had senators and members in the House that would fight for living wages, would end the filibuster so that they could pass voting rights, imagine what we do. We have to say, look at what they have to say, look at what we've done, but imagine what we could do and speak directly to poor and low income people who have who suffer the most in this country, but now uh, have tremendous power. 80 million 
80 million low-income voters were eligible to vote. 58 million voted, but 80 million, that's 22 million people that we cannot with, uh, leave off the table, we can't refuse to talk to, and we must speak to. Reverend William Barber, thank you. Next.